Hey, and welcome back to another video from my Vintage Tech Showcase playlist, the uh, playlist of videos where I showcase older electronic devices in a uh, form of retro style review. And what I have for you here today is the Nokia Asha or Nokia Asha, whichever way you want to call it, uh, 311 from uh, 2012. So the Nokia Asha 311 uh, was a phone at the time where I, now I already did an introduction video to this. You can go watch it on my channel. In the introduction video, I said it was from a time where Nokia was, you know, realizing that Symbian and their the, the Series 40 and this basis sort of OS. Uh, this is not any of those. This is a, I'll talk about the OS in a bit. Uh, but uh, it's a time where Nokia realized that uh, their Symbian Series 40, all et cetera, et cetera had to be you know gotten rid of uh, and the asha series was somewhat of a last uh, the last uh, may i wouldn't say major but last set of some of the last set of phones uh, that featured this design this old nokia-esque design right before nokia switched to windows phone they already had a windows phone at the time they had a few windows phones but uh, this is from around when uh, they, uh, right before they completely switched to Windows Phone. And this is also a time where Nokia started to, you know, slowly decline. They realized that Apple and Samsung have been doing phones really well for many years and they were kind of late to the party. They stuck with Symbian for too long and uh, they uh, went for Windows Phone instead of going for Android, which was their biggest mistake, even though they had an Android prototype. Uh, it's called, it was called the Nokia Ion, as I can remember. It's a very, very rare phone. There's a few of them in existence. I might get my hands on one someday, so uh, hopefully. Um, but uh, Nokia's biggest mistake was uh, not switching uh, to Android. Instead, they went to Windows Phone. They did some really good Windows phones, of course. The uh, Lumia 1020, 1520, uh, 920 uh, but then again Windows OS had its limits and um, yeah that's this was released at a time where Nokia was slightly starting to go down now the Asha 311 is the flagship of the Asha touch family because there was a lot of other Asha phones as well a lot of ones with keyboards and different uh, sort of designs as a touch and type which is on on its way from Greece. I actually bought one from my uh, uh, usual uh, seller from Greece. Uh, I get a lot of phones from him as well uh, on eBay. Uh, I bought the Asha some touch and type. I forgot what it was called, but it's definitely an Asha touch and type. That's on its way too. So so definitely stay tuned for that video. This was the flagship of the Asha touch lineup because uh, there was a few other uh, Asha touch phones as well. And uh, today we'll be uh, reviewing this phone in a full retro style review. You know, the usual, the camera, the display, etc., etc. And uh, we'll be seeing what it's like uh, here in 2022. Now, as usual, before jumping right in, don't forget to smash that like button down below as it helps this video get on YouTube's algorithm. And also don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. And of course, ring that bell notification button so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. I'm on Instagram, Discord, and Twitter, and you can follow me on those using the links down in the description below and now let's uh, jump into this video starting with the design and build quality and then go on to display software hardware etc etc you know how it works so let's go uh, into build quality first and I want to talk about the pricing of this thing because uh, I could get proper pricing for this it was released for about 92 euros which is about somewhere around the $85 mark. Uh, this wasn't officially sold in the US as I remember. I could be wrong. Let me know down in the comments if I'm wrong. Uh, but this was mainly a European market, Asian market phone. It uh, also came in a bun bunch of colors. Like the Asha lineup was a very colorful bunch of phones. So dark gray, rose, uh, rose red, blue, brown, and sand white. This one is the dark gray one. It's black essentially, but they call it dark gray. Uh, so dark gray, rose red, blue, brown, and sand white. And it sold for uh, 92 euros ish. This thing is running the uh, Symbian, well not Symbian, this thing is running the Series 40 platform. Series 40 and Symbian should not be confused. Uh, so let's talk about that later and we'll go into the design and build quality. So in terms of build quality, it's not the best built phone ever. The Asha lineup was not known for extreme build quality because these were budget phones. Uh, but this one for the price you pay, I honestly have no complaints. Of course, it's entirely built of plastic. It's towards the plastic side as you can 
here with me tapping on there, but it does feel solid. It is a sufficiently built phone. It feels solid in the hand. It's got this nice curved back like the uh, iPhone 3GS. So it's, it's, you feel confident in holding it. Doesn't feel like it's gonna slip out. Overall, a decently built phone, not gonna hate on it too much. Uh, it is decent for what it is. So uh, first we can go into talking about the design. So uh, as you can see up front here, we have the uh, ear the earpiece over here. We have the uh, Nokia logo as well. We have the display, which we'll talk about in a bit. Down here, we have the decline call button and the accept call button. And here, you, as you can see, there's a small cutout for the microphone. So that is the front of the phone. Let's uh, lock the phone. And moving on to this side, we have the uh, lock button, the unlock lock button, the good old Nokia button. It's not a slider like the older phones, but it's just a button. We have the volume rocker over here. On this side, we have the lanyard straps. You can open the battery bay and put a lanyard for your hand over there. Uh, moving to the top of the phone, uh, we have the micro uh, SD, uh, sorry, the micro USB port here, the micro USB port. We still have the barrel charger, the uh, slim, the slimmer barrel charger like that. You can still charge it like that, but uh, it also charges off micro USB. And we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack over there as well. Then moving on to the back of the device, we have this mono speaker down here and it's a quite decent mono speaker. Nokia 311 branding, uh, Nokia branding, 3.2 megapixel branding over there and the, we have the 3.2 megapixel uh, shooter up there. Decent camera for what it is. Uh, overall, a decent build quality and uh, quite of a average looking phone. There's nothing too major about it. But personally, I really like this design. It's a budget design, but it doesn't totally feel budget. It feels more than it what it costs. And a lot of people hated this phone uh, and the other Asha phones. Even when I posted a uh, posted a picture of it on uh, vintage mobile phones, they said it was a ho this one guy said it was a horrible phone. I, I, I understand why people call it a horrible phone, but I don't hate on it too much. It was a budget phone and for what it is, it's not too bad. I wouldn't hate on it too much, but overall a decent build quality and a above average design for general purpose users. But for me, I really like it. All right, so now it's time to talk about the display on this thing. And firstly, I would like you to ignore this black ish patch this ghosting black patch you can see on the screen at the back there that's because uh, this phone uh, has been exposed to moisture at some time and some moisture got underneath the display uh, previously but it doesn't seem to affect the performance of the phone so it is what it is just ignore it now right off the bat i can say this display is easily the best selling point of this phone for its price range it's a very gorgeous display. It's bright, it's accurate, the colors are good, um, it's sharp, even though it has a low pixel density, and it's overall a very solid display. Today's a really bright side out, bright day outside as well, and uh, I went to take some photos for the camera set, for the, for the camera samples, and I was blown away on how bright this display is at max brightness. I didn't even have to put it to max brightness, so very solid display in terms of brightness, outdoor performance, and uh, color, accuracy, color accuracy as well. And, Speaking of colors, a lot of websites say this is 65,000 colors with a TFT panel. It is a TFT panel, but no way on earth is this uh, 65,000 colors. They got that wrong. Because I've seen this very exact image, this balloon image on a uh, MacBook and some other phones as well. And I can compare and say, this is 256,000 colors. This is not 65,000 colors. There's no way this is 65,000 colors. This has way more colors than 65,000. 65,000 is the bare minimum to make it at least bearable. This is way better than that. This is 256,000, which is the minimum for the human eye uh, to see uh, Adequate colors, adequate colors. Uh, 65,000 is way less. This is no way on earth 65,000 colors. 65,000 looks horrible. This image will not look this good in 65,000. So it's 256,000 colors TFT LCD display. Uh, it's also a capacitive display, but for some reason, uh, a lot of people confuse it for a, resi a resistive. Uh, that's because the uh, the feedback on the motor, actually, when you touch it, sort of gives it this resistive feel to it. But this is glass, this is not plastics. It is a resistive, it is a capacitive touchscreen. So uh, the display specs are, is it, it's a three inch display, so three inch diagonally like that, 240 by 400 pixels, or so 240 by 400, with a five by three aspect ratio and a, a pixel density of about 155 pixels per inch. And it has Corning Gorilla Glass, which was out at the time, but I think uh, Series 2 was out at the time, Gorilla Glass Series 
price to all gen 2 so at this price range i'm assuming this is generation one so gorilla glass generation one uh, three inch display tft lcd 256,000 colors 240 by 400 5 by 3 aspect ratio uh, 155 pixels per inch and like i said overall a very solid display i'd gladly use this here in 2022 and i should do a video using this in 2022 after using it for a week uh it's bright it's accurate it's colorful it's an amazing display overall easily usable even in 2022 uh, if you don't mind the lower resolution so for internal specifications on this thing uh, for processor it runs a single core one gigahertz arm 11 processor so uh, single core one gigahertz arm 11 uh, not sure who the manufacturer itself is could be texas instruments could be some other company uh, it's highly unlikely i'll find the manufacturer but i'll put it up there if i uh, do find the manufacturer and uh, for micro sd expansion this thing has a micro sd expansion slot internally uh, in the battery bay for uh, up to 32 gigabytes uh, and uh, it has an internal storage of about 256 megabytes and it has 128 megs of ram now there's some conflicting reports i found online that some websites say this has 140 megabytes of uh, internal storage but uh, from what i can tell 256 megabytes is a bit more accurate and um, the ram is of course 120 megabytes um for additional for additional specifications i mean this thing doesn't really have too much in the way it's a basic uh pseudo smartphone people call this a pseudo smartphone uh that's because uh it's it has smartphone features but not all of the features uh and we'll talk about the extra features on this phone in the extra features section towards the end of this video but uh nothing too much in the way of extra features and people call this a pseudo-esque smartphone it's sort of a smartphone but not really there as well. It does not have true multitasking to be classified as a full-scale smartphone, uh, but it is what it is. Uh, and now that's just basically for the internal hardware and storage specs on this phone. It's pretty basic and uh, that's what you can expect at that price range. So now let's go into the software. So the OS on this thing is the Nokia Series 40 OS and we can uh, test, I, I can show you the version by, uh, where's the phone? So we can do, star hash zero 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 hash there's your version uh nokia 311 rm714 variant and that's the version 7.36 uh, uh the version of the series the series 40 os so nokia series 40 was a sort of pseudo symbian it was sort of based on symbian but it wasn't entirely fully fledged symbian um and Symbian was left for the higher end smartphones, the more premium phones. Uh, Series 40 was considered again a pseudo smartphone OS and it kind of goes with this phone as well. This thing does not have proper multitasking, neither does it have a proper HTML browsers. You can't call this as a, call this a smartphone even though Nokia in 2012 and 13 marketed the Asha lineup as smartphones. They are not smartphones. Uh, they're pseudo smartphones. So here's the OS, pretty familiar. These were on advertisements a lot back in the day. So we have music player over here. This is some stock Nokia sounds. I have a feeling this phone, because it has its stock sounds and stuff, it does a lot of stock stuff. I think this could have been a stow unit, but the display having moisture on it wouldn't make any sense. I, I don't know, it could be a stow unit, but either way, uh, this is your uh, basic OS. You have gallery messaging, store camera. It has EA, so I'm surprised EA is on there. I'm, uh, uh, I pulled this EA joke before, but I'm um, surprised we don't have to pay to even have the icon there. If you know EA, you'd understand the joke. Uh, but um, we have a bunch of stuff. I think this chat, uh, thing is an add-on. I don't think that came with it, but these Asha phones came with a lot of software installed. It has its intro introduction video for some reason. Uh, a lot of Nokia's had this. It's kind of a trailer. But it really doesn't do anything. It could be could be glitched out. But a lot of Nokia's had their trailers for some reason. The phone trailer. Uh, video is separate even though you can switch to video from the main camera application as well. I don't understand that but whatever. Log, news reader, weather, Facebook, Twitter, mail exchange. And there's a ton of games. Uh, these are demo games as well. Uh, Bejeweled, Football, Wander, Maze, Need for Speed. We played this in the uh, previous video as well. 
so since we played Need for Speed in the previous introduction video, we can now play Angry Birds. Um, this is, I think, Angry Birds 1. Yeah, it's Angry Birds 1. So this, this was a very popular game at the time. Uh, okay. Um, let's see how well it plays. I mean, it plays, the Need for Speed game is quite silly. You can go and watch it on that other video. Uh, but I remember playing that game back in the day as well. Um, I think this hasn't played been played before. Come on. Yes, everyone knows to play Angry Birds. Oh, wow. I'm that bad, huh? Um, what was the Red Bird special ability? I forgot. Oh, right. He can accelerate. You get the idea. It's, it's just basic Angry Birds. But, uh, yeah. So you can close the app by pressing that button as well. So as you can see on the Asha, vers the Asha version or Asha design for the Series 40, um, it is a completely swipe OS. As you can see, it's easy to use with one hand. Since it doesn't have a home button, you can just swipe like that. And this is technically the home screen, but it's not a true home screen. You also can't have a true wallpaper. The only wallpaper you can have is on the lock screen. Uh, and when you swipe like that, you it goes away and this is completely black. This is always like that. You can change themes as much as you want, but that doesn't change. Only this area changes. The pink, as you can see, the outlines and stuff. Uh, <clears throat> we can change it to aqua. And as you see, it changed to aqua. As you can see, the color changed change to aqua. It's just the, he the, the headers and the footers and stuff and this line going through here. Not much in the way of themes. <clears throat> not a lot of customization. I've seen a lot of Asha phone, well not Asha, well Series uh, 40 phones had uh, some decent customization, but this doesn't have much in the way. Um, it is what it is. Uh, it's a basic OS as I showed you. Um, you can't expect too much from this price range. You have your basics over here. And I'm sure someone has installed this stuff. I don't think it came with that much of bloat. Uh, counters, newsreader, I don't know where. Mail exchange, I'm pretty sure that's not stock. Uh, but it is what it is. The music player, as you can see, it has some of uh, Nokia's old tones there. Uh, not sure if they're copyrighted. Don't know if I can play it or not, so I'm not gonna play it. Um, unsure whether they're copyrighted or not. Under settings, <clears throat> you have your tones and profiles and stuff. Not a lot of, uh, usually budget phones do have a lot of customization to make them, to make people wanna buy them. Cause you're already paying for a budget phone. You're not, you're not paying much of it. You don't get too much out of it. You, you, so there should be some incentive to buy one. So a lot of customization makes people wanna buy a phone at a really low price range. But this thing doesn't have too much in the way of customization in the OS. <clears throat> It also has this neat little notification center that if you pull down like that, uh, you have access to stuff there as well. So play, call, write, and uh, we have Wi-Fi settings, we have connectivity, Bluetooth, and the music player directly as well. You can quickly jump to the music player from there. And the color of this music, of this basically uh, notification center changes depending on which theme you have selected. So that's also a little nice touch. You cannot access it, however, from the lock screen like that. As you can see, you have to unlock the phone uh, before accessing it. But nevertheless, that is the OS. So now let's go ahead and play uh, some Nokia tones. And uh, this has some of the original tones. Let's do max volume. And as you can see, the color also, the volume uh, comes on screen like that. And the color changes with the theme. If you put pink, this is pink. If you put blue, I've put uh, blue there, so it's blue. But it's kind of annoying, cause see, when, you, when that's on screen, you can't do anything until it goes away. It's nice, it looks nice with this blue speaker effect, but it, until it goes away, you can't do anything. So just a minor detail. So max volume <clears throat> and uh, Nokia Tone, open files. Let's go and play this. Let's go and play something else. I think Kalimba, oh, Remix, what's this? Ooh, that's a bit annoying, uh, but it, it is what it is. I mean, if you like it, uh, it's a Nokia Tune Remix. Isn't there like a sort of, I couldn't really copy songs under this. How about Topic? No, um, <clears throat> let's see. There was something. Kalimba is a classic, but there's nothing much to hear out of it. There you go. Nothing much there. 
Let's see, activity. So that was a speaker demon. It's actually a really nice speaker. It's loud. It's not tinny. It's not crackly. It is a mono speaker, but it's really loud and really nice. So another good feature of this phone is its speaker. So big thumbs up for the speaker. So the camera on this thing is a 3.2 megapixel shooter without a flash. And uh, it has an EDOF technology of some sort. So EDOF as in extended depth of field. So that sort of helps with uh, zooming and uh, b images, uh, well, subjects a bit far away. So extended depth of field, 3.2 megapixel camera. It can shoot video at 480p at 25 SP FPS. So uh, 480p, 25 FPS was standard for a budget phone at the time. And it's got an F2.8 aperture as well, but I cannot confirm that because it was just from uh, a few websites, only not all the websites. So uh, let's just say 3.2 megapixel camera, 480p, uh, 25 FPS, F2.8 aperture uh, with extended depth of field and no uh, flash as well. And as you can see, the camera module is quite big as well. The, even just the camera there, as you can see, quite big. <clears throat> So that is the camera. Let's go into the camera interface. Uh, pretty basic camera interface. It, as you can see, it's like that. When you uh, do that, it goes into that mode. Uh, you can manually select landscape and stuff. We have pro settings over here. We have a grid and we have lighting. We have basic exposure settings. Uh, capture normal, uh, fun. You basically have some effects as well. Fun sounds, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> you have settings, photo size, max. Uh, and standard, we have photo storage location, photo album, photo title, camera sounds, photo review, orientation, you can select uh, automatically, uh, select it manually. <clears throat> we have a video switcher over here, and it's kind of strange that the video camera, you can also access it separately, but you can also switch it from here. Gallery, take a photo, uh, back, this doesn't have a camera shutter button, so yeah. And then uh, we can switch to video from here as well. And we have <clears throat> we have our video settings over here. We have mic, we have pro options, exposure, lighting, grid, uh, effects there as well. So some basic effects, which is nice. We have settings as well, video size, video sounds, blah, 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 blah. A pretty basic uh, video interface. And uh, not many photos and videos you can take uh, with this uh, built-in storage, because there's not much built-in storage. Uh, though it's 256 megs, um, you, can, you only have 140 megs of internal storage available to the user. So for overall photo quality, I was actually blown away by the quality of these photos. They're really bright, they're really sharp, they're exposed well, they're not blurry, and uh, the, uh, ex the extended depth of field, the EDOF, definitely helps with these photos. I was really blown away on, uh, on this bright day today, how it managed to take some really good photos. Um, so really big thumbs up on the camera there as well. Another great selling point. I don't know why a lot of people hated this phone. Uh, maybe because of the plasticky design. I don't know. There's, the display is great. The camera is great. Uh, and the OS, it takes a bit of liking to do, but when you do like it, it's really good. But the, dis the camera though, it took some really nice photos and I'll put them up in a bit uh, for you to view in full screen. And the video was also pretty good. It wasn't overwhelming or unusually great, but it was decent for what you're paying for this price range. So these are the photos. I'll uh, roll them in a few seconds. So let's start off with the uh, photos and then followed by the videos in three, two, one, let's go.
All right, so as you saw with those photos, uh, this thing takes some really, really good photos. And uh, phones in this price range today, for example, $80 to $90, if you go to Walmart or Amazon, you can get a blue phone, BLU, for about $80 to $90, maybe unlocked. There are a few really super budget phones. They cannot compete with this thing's camera. Those phones will have like f maybe eight megapixel cameras, but this 3.2 megapixel camera completely destroys those cameras. It can ca uh, capture really good uh, details, as you saw with, the, with those photos. So really big thumbs up on the camera. Uh, easily one of the best selling points of this phone, the camera, um, even though it's a 3.2 megapixel, that extended depth of field actually helps quite a lot with software processing. So honestly, a very good feature of this phone can beat out some uh, super budget phones in 2022 as well. But then again, it's a Nokia, so you shouldn't really be too surprised. <clears throat> so for extra features on this thing now furthermore cementing the fact that this is a pseudo smartphone and i mentioned this in the nokia x2 uh, the x302 video as well if you already haven't seen that this is also a pseudo smartphone uh, this thing also like the x302 has usb on the go so you can plug a usb cable in through your uh, otg adapter and browse it through files so that's another smartphone feature that this phone has further cementing the fact that it is a pseudo smartphone uh for additional features of course uh it, most of the features on this thing is software but it also has uh it has fm radio it has um it has gorilla glass you can count that as an extra feature uh for such a cheap phone you get gorilla glass at least gen 1 so you have some protection there so that's nice Nice to see uh, it does not have GPS so no GPS so that's something they had to cut out because GPS transmitters and receivers are a bit more expensive so might have brought the price to a hundred dollars uh, maybe they just wanted to keep it lower than a hundred it also has RDS uh, I also said stereo FM radio uh, the FM radio is stereo so stereo FM radio RDS USB on the go uh, Java games the games were promoted heavily especially the need for speed game they promoted games heavily for this phone a budget phone with a lot of games accessible and yes the Nokia store did have a lot of good games um, and that it is what it is everything else is just basic uh, features uh, yeah, and also it has Wi-Fi, so that's a good thing. Some phones at that price range did not have Wi-Fi either. So uh, big thumbs up, it has Wi-Fi, uh, just no GPS, everything else it does have. So now let's go ahead and talk about the battery and power on this thing, because this thing has a really, really good battery life. So we're here in the battery bay and let's take the battery out for a minute. As you can see, I've used a smaller battery with some uh, tissue to uh, kind of fill up the space. Uh, that's the in inside of the battery bay. So we have Nokia Model 311 RM714, that's the battery bay. There is a dummy SIM in there, but that's just to take up space. It doesn't really touch the contacts, so the phone still thinks there's no SIM in there. And uh, we have the micro SD expansion as well. Uh, the battery I'm using here is a BL4S battery, so it's uh, much smaller than uh, the original battery. The original battery that came with it, I have to uh, sort of force it to charge. It doesn't charge anymore, so I may be able to resuscitate the battery. So uh, the original battery on this thing, is a uh, Nokia BL4U which is a 1200 milliamp hour battery so the BL with this battery bigger battery than that uh, it used to get uh, up to around 700 hours of standby on 2G and about 750 hours of standby on 3G and a talk time of around 14 hours on 2G and about 7 hours on 3G. So really good battery performance. And even with the tinier uh, 800, I think this is, uh, uh, yeah, 860 milliamp hours. Even with the tinier 860 milliamp hour battery, uh, I didn't have to charge this quite a lot uh, since I got it. Uh, it. That battery belongs to the Nokia C3, or is it this? I forgot where that battery comes from. Uh, but I didn't have to charge it a lot. It actually uh, has a really, really good battery life. And a lot of the reviews said that those numbers may be a bit off as well. It may be actually a bit more if you keep the brightness down. So uh, excellent battery life. And again, it's a, the, the Nokia Asha series was also sold as sort of a gaming-ish because it had a lot of games on the app store they promoted the need for speed games and all the need for speed the run game for the phone and then a lot of games so it had to have a good had to have a good battery life and they did promote the battery life saying it has an amazing battery life and that reflects off the reviews as well so another great selling point so I don't understand why some people didn't like this phone you, you're getting a solid camera you're getting amazing battery life you have a uh, USB on the go feature a few sm few uh, smartphone features uh let me 
turn this on first. Don't think I did that at the beginning, so you get to hear that. Um, so you get smartphone features, you get Gorilla Glass, uh, you get a really unique single-handed user available, single-handed use OS. Um, and it's the only downside technically of this phone is there's no front camera and the build quality isn't that great. But you remember, you're paying only 92 euros, so I never understood why people hate it on this phone. But it is what it is. I guess everyone has their own thing. Um, I really like this phone and I really want to get my hands on the other Asha phones and all the other colors as well. So definitely stay tuned for those videos there. They will be in time to come. So as usual, uh, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you honestly did, be, please uh, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below in the like button. Also hit that subscribe button and ring that bell notification button to get notified whenever I upload a new video. I'm on Instagram, Discord and Twitter and you can uh, follow me on those using the links down in the description below. Thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my next video.